welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how I made this bottle art depicting an underwater scene with tissue paper and air dry clay. Of course, as usual, I'm starting out with an empty bottle and peeling off the label, which this time was quite stubborn, so it took some uh, <laughs> scraping and I also used some acetone to remove some of that sticky residue um, and I also removed the um, leftover part from uh, the lid and for the base of this bottle I want to have this interesting textured um, surface so I'm just going to be using uh, tissue paper and watered down uh, PVA glue to cover uh, the entire surface of the bottle. I'm using my brush in a stippling motion to actually help create those wrinkles um, in the tissue paper and I doubled up the layer. Uh, when that has fully dried I am pulling out some air dry clay and I have a little bit of water on hand um, and I'm also using a little bits of PVA glue to put under the pieces of clay that are going to be stuck to the bottle. I'm also using just a random assortment of tools uh, from a ball stylus to a pokey tool to the cap of a marker uh, to the grip of my exacto blade that has that non-slip um, handle uh, to make the scales texture on my largest fish and I have a pretty good idea of um, what I want but I'm still kind of open and letting myself be guided by the material. I know I want to have several fish and some aquatic plants um, but I have never sculpted um, fish before uh, with air dry clay so I'm just letting it guide me. For the second fish I wanted to have a different larger scale tex texture uh, so I just used one of those bags from oranges and I just pressed it into the clay to create that texture. And I'm always using a small amount of um, PVA glue right under the clay to just make sure that that bond is permanent. And I'm always um, dipping my fingers into a little bit of water to help with um, smoothing out the clay and it not sticking to my fingers as much. So after I created um, my two larger fish, I also made three little tiny ones. Originally I thought I wanted to make them identical like a small school of fish, but I decided to make them all have their individual um, looks. And I'm also making it aquatic plants by making these snakes of clay and just using different tools and my fingers to um, create like vein textures on the leaves. On the other side of the bottle I wanted to make a seahorse. Now I've never sculpted a seahorse before um, but I just looked at some pictures on the internet um, just to inspire myself 
it's not very realistic and it's not at a very good scale uh, compared to the fishes um, but I just really wanted to make a seahorse as I think they're really really beautiful creatures and I just wanted to make one on this side of the bottle with the seahorse I wanted to keep it a little bit less busy so that the seahorse can be the centerpiece so I'm just adding some more aquatic plants this time um, with a bit chunkier leaves when I'm done with the body of the bottle I turn my attention to the bottle cap and I add a generous amount of PVA glue because this one is a more slippery surface it's sort of aluminium probably and I just completely cover the entire surface of the bottle cap and for the very top I wanted to make a little starfish so I just um, made a pentagon first and then just uh, extruded those little starfish arms until <laughs> it looked kind of what I I was aiming for. I'm also texturing the edges of the bottle cap to sort of look like um, maybe a fishing net. I just wanted to wanted it to have an interesting texture. After it dried overnight, I start painting the bottle, and everything is going to be done just with. Um, acrylic paints and at one point I do use shellac ink um, but it's mostly acrylic paints so I chose um, this beautiful um, deep blue and I'm just giving it a coat everywhere that's water um, trying <laughs> to go around the objects but um, I, I wasn't very precise but it's fine because um, these acrylics are pretty matte and they can cover um, mistakes in one coat um, so after that first layer dried I took a much lighter blue and I'm just dry brushing all over the blue surface to bring out all of that um, beautiful texture from the tissue paper wrinkles and after I'm done with that I actually use an off-white color for an even lighter dry brushing to catch those very high points and I'm using the same off-white to color in um, the bubbles. Now for the aquatic plants, I'm just using an olive green for all of them as a base coat. But um, each different species of plant actually is going to have their unique coloring by the end but I did want the underlying color to sort of be cohesive I wanted to have a nice pleasant visual um, basically trio of colors with the with the blue and the orange for the creatures and the green for the plants of course I use a variety of oranges so I colored uh, the seahorse into this nice um, orangish coral color um, the goldfish looking fish actually <laughs> ended up you know being painted in a very standard way and the other fishies um, all got a treatment of different browns and oranges and reds 
and the bottle cap um, gets mostly colored in brown but it will get um, several coats um, later on. At this stage it looks a little bit too stark uh, so I'm just starting the process of layering colors and differentiating each thing and giving it character and uh, as you can see I'm dry brushing a very light green over um, one of the plants and I've made this um, dark green wash um, to get into the crevices um, in all of the plants actually but some of them will have more of that dark green uh, left over and then others and I'm also layering colors on um, on the fishes always kind of switching uh, between what I'm working on giving them a few minutes to dry in between and I actually colored the starfish in the same uh, coral orange color uh, that the seahorse has to tie it all together and I'm going in with various coats of um, different colors, uh, dry brushing and uh, a couple of washes as well and sometimes I'm just even using uh, my fingers to catch the high points uh, for some for the illusion of some light for some reason I just I feel very comfortable I'm painting with my fingers. Some of the plants actually got to uh, be darker rather than lighter uh, by the end. And of course I'm painting the little eyes on the fish as well. And as you can see, dry brushing is just such a wonderful technique that brings everything to life and it's so easy. Whereas before I discovered this technique, I used to spend so much time painstakingly painting every little bit, whereas you can just so easily do it <laughs> this way. And yes, I am using um mixture of shellac ink with a little bit of brown acrylic paint um, as a wash to go over everything this has three effects that i really like first of all the wash um, flows into all of the nooks and crannies and the cracks and makes things a lot more dimensional and brings everything to life makes it look more 3d secondly it makes my whole bottle look a little bit more vintage and toned down as opposed to those really uh, bright colors as they came out right of the bottle and thirdly it just seals everything so that it becomes archival. I wasn't really happy with the bottle cap still so I just gave it a little bit of a blue and a little bit of um, more yellow um, dry brushing for some color variation. I actually mix, mixed those colors <laughs> right there um, with the result of a little bit of green and to finish everything off I'm using a really nice highly pigmented um, copper-ish uh, metallic acrylic paint and I'm just using my fingers to um, rub it all over and catch all of those raised areas and make it look really shiny it also gives it 
um, the sort of antique look <laughs> that I'm really fond of. There it is. My bottle is done. Um, this is definitely something different for me. Uh, usually I use um, a lot of different materials and mediums. But this time I wanted to purposely restrict myself to only using air dry clay and to stretch myself a little and um, just dip into sculpting if you enjoyed watching this video and if you'd like to see more of the things that I make in the future please do subscribe to my channel I do have a lot of projects coming up um, and feel free to check out my other videos I have um, quite a variety of projects, um, not just bottle arts, but miniature dioramas and embroidery projects as well. So please do go visit my channel, have a look, um, see if there's anything else there that might interest you. I would also love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, feedback is really really helpful to me and um, I just like to hear your thoughts thank you for watching I hope you have a nice day bye